Hello everyone, Big Grat 3 turns here again to do my finally top, my, f my finally, finally to do the top 100 matches of 2011. Holy shit, this has been a long time coming. I'm very sorry for those that are upset that I took so long to get this out, but I've been busy a lot. This, most of you pretty much know that, uh... Ever since, and I spoke about this, ever since my car accident, I've had a lot of less time at home because I've been trying to get more sleep. And because of that, I've had less time for wrestling. And that's why I got really caught up on, uh, I got really behind on my pro wrestling from from the second half of 2012, 2011. So I was really behind in catching up with Puro and Dragon Gate and CCW and stuff like that. But I, I'm slowly by slowly getting really caught up. So, but all that matters is I'm done finally, and now I can present my top 100 matches of 2011. Um, I'm going to make this a three-part video. The first part's going to be from the honorable mentions to number 55, and the second part from 54 to 11, and then the top 10 all in one video. So, without a doubt, let's get started with the honorable mentions. I'm not going to go match by match. I'm just going to kind of give a general overview. The honorable mentions are in the... Uh, they're in the Twit Longer link. Go over there if you want to see the honorable mentions. I can't do it. But we'll talk about a few of them here. Uh, one that I have to mention is Nigel McGuinness versus Eddie Edwards at 2CW, the 11th hour. This was on Nigel's retirement tour, and this was just a great, great match. Tremendous technical wrestling from start to finish. Nigel still got it. Um, they didn't do anything too crazy in this match. No lariats. And, like, nothing really out of the ordinary. Nigel, you can clearly tell. I mean, he's on a retirement tour for a reason. He's clearly banged up. But, like, you know, he still did some of his normal stuff. Eddie Edwards kind of took the brunt of the work in this match. But Nigel was still great. And Nigel's technical wrestling was still spot on. So it was still, a, a, like I said, it was a great match. I really enjoyed it from start to finish. And I'll put a link in the description box for that match. Because I just saw that match. And that match was, like I said, it's a great match. I think everyone should check it out. It's worth a watch. It's really, really, really entertaining, and I like and I love Nigel's work throughout the match. So yeah, great stuff there. Um, and I felt really sad re when I realized that this was most likely Nigel's last modern day pro wrestling match that I would see. That made me sad. So yeah. Aries versus Moxley. I spoke about this. Oh, actually, well, you guys haven't heard this <laughs> in my Daniel Talks Pro Wrestling interview, which will get uploaded as soon as I get home. But uh. That match is uh, that match is one of my favorite matches of 2011. It's one of the most underrated. It's not one of the best. It's the 125th best, but it's one of the most underrated. No one really talks about it, and I really like the match. I really like the story of the match. Go check that out. <laughs> Shane Holster versus Davy Richards. That's a great match. No one really talks about that one. Let's see what else we got here. The Kings of Wrestling versus Takeshi Morishima and Shuhei Taniguchi. I don't think anyone, I don't think I've even spoken about this match on camera. Uh, this match is great. This match is just great. These are the uh, the Noah shows from the UK, May thirteenth and May fourteenth. Um, a great double shot of shows. The Kings of Wrestling had a match here, and the crowd I remember was on fire towards the end of this match. They just. The crowd is what made this match. Towards the end of the match, the crowd just got progressively better and better, and it just—it was a great atmosphere. So definitely great stuff from there. Eddie Edwards versus Chris Daniels for the ROH TV title. That match is technically from 2010, but it, it was shown in 2011, so I'm including it in the 2011 bunch. That's a great match. Let me just look at what else we got. Just looking for stuff that not many people really talk about. Uh, Devin Moore and the Briscoes versus Robert Anthony and Philly's Most Wanted. That's The crowd is also excellent in that match. Really puts that match over. Really makes that match feel like a big deal. Hiroshi Tanahashi versus Toru Yano in a G1 Climax match. That match was really entertaining. That match was some great, great, great stuff. The crowd, for whatever reason, really, really, really got into Toru Yano, even though he was heel. And they just really, really, really wanted to see him win. And they were just really behind him the whole time. It made for an interesting dynamic, and it made the match really interesting because of it. Great stuff in that match. Uh... Another one of my favorite matches last year was uh, 
Johnny Gargano versus Chuck Taylor from Evolve 9. That match is just a great match. And if you follow the careers of both Gargano and Taylor, you realize why that match is so good. Like, they just, they use each other's finishers. They, they had the perfect reversals for each other's moves. It was just like, it was like they know each other so well that that's why it made for a very interesting pro wrestling match. And that was the story of the match. And like I said, it was a very entertaining match because of it. But yeah, that's the honorable mentions from 1, like, 30, 132 to 101. So just take a quick look at that. And now let's get into the actual top 100. All right. Again, I'm not going to go over every match, but I'm going to go over mo- I'm going to go over some of them and I have a few highlighted that I specifically want to go over. So let's start off with number 100. Blood Warriors versus Junction 3. BB Hulk and Akira Tozawa versus Jimmy Yokosuka and Jimmy Kagatora in the Open the Fantastic Gate Tour at Infinity 243 on 12-1-11. This match was awesome. Albine Dragon Gate matches. I'm going to do another video talking about Puro in 2011 and 2012. But basically, the Dragon Gate stuff, not a whole lot that I really liked. There were, I think, one good match. I mean, there's, there was a lot of matches that I watched from Dragon Gate. There was like 10, and none of them I just really thought were anything special. I thought they were all like really, really good, but they all had the same problems, and that's why the matches were never, never got to the next level. This match got to the next level. I think it was because of the length. I believe the actual match was 21 minutes, but because this was on Infinity, it was edited, and so it went like 17 minutes, and I think that actually helped the match, because it didn't feel like a little out of control, it felt like the match had the right time and the right pacing, plus Akira Tozawa is just so awesome, that the control of the match towards the end, the pace, the execution of the near falls, was really, really well done, and I bought into all the near falls, and drama's the key to pro wrestling. Uh, The reason why some of these matches are higher on the list, and maybe they're not as good match quality-wise as some of the other ones, lower on the list, is because of drama. At the end, I always ask myself, did I buy into the near falls? And when I can buy into the near falls, that's what makes the match really entertaining for me. And that carries the match a long way. So, that match was great. Uh, 99, a match that I think is really underrated. Ronan versus Ricochet and Ricky Doy from Dragon Gate USA United, New York City. That's a great match. That's a really, really entertaining match. I remember really, really liking that match when I saw it live. That's something that should be checked out. Uh, let me see what else we got here. Looking for something that kind of stands out in the top 10. Uh, I would say Shinsuke Nakamura versus Minoru Suzuki. Is a is a great great match. Uh, that that match has some great drama. That match was a like also Daniel talked pro rest to this in the interview, which again none of you can hear until I get back. But he said that that match was his match of the year. Uh, I believe he ranked it eighty eight percent, which in his ratings was like four and three quarters. Um, and I agree with his reasons why. I think the non pro rest. I think the pro rest elements of this match, like the. The interference and, like, you know, the non-match quality stuff. It really put this match over the top. Like, all the interference and, like, all the ref distractions. And, like, you know, Minoru Suzuki is just such a great heel. Like, he was such a great heel in this match. That's the best way I can say it. And he and he and, uh, he and Nakamura had a very great match. Because Nakamura is probably New Japan's best guy, I would say, from what I've seen. So yeah, that match, yeah, that's a great. Like I said, that the pro re, the the non-match quality elements is what makes that match so great. It's what makes that match so entertaining. So that's why that match gets really, really high marks. It's really, really fun to watch. Chuck Taylor versus Ricochet, very underrated match in my opinion. One of the better matches on that show. Uh, Seaman Ricochet versus Masato Yoshino and Pac. Uh, this match is awesome. Um, again, Dragon Gate USA. Same with Dragon Gate. You know, a lot of their matches that I saw, none of them really wowed me. It's just because, like I said, they all kind of feel very similar. But this match surprised me. I was really into the near falls of this match. I don't know why I was. I was not into a match that I think is a little overrated. Seema and Ricochet versus Pac and Dragon Kid, a match that a lot of people love. I wasn't into the near falls of that match. Maybe it's because I don't follow the product very well. So when those guys are exchanging a million near falls, I'm not buying into it. Like, I'm just like, I don't care. I wasn't. I still thought the match was very good, but the near falls didn't engrass me. I think because I follow this product a little more closely, and because I understood the storyline of, of of the Pac Ricochet Challenge Series and Tag Champions versus Tag Champions, it made the match feel like a bigger deal. 
So I think because of that, that's why I bought into the near falls more, and I was able to really enjoy this match. But that match was a great match, in my opinion. Survival of the Fittest, uh, great, great, great match there. Shinsuke Nakamura, Hiroyoshi Tenzan. This match, this match was awesome. This match was so good. Hiroyoshi Tenzan impressed the living hell out of me in this match. His comebacks in this match were just insane. I'll never forget this. Nakamura and him, for one, do a great job of, of working, of making Tenzan look like he's in an extreme danger. But he makes a way to come out of that danger that is believable and relevant. And it gets me into seeing him overcome the odds. He There's this one spot, I'll never forget this, where Nakamura whips him into a corner. Nakamura is charging at him, going for a knee or something. He's charging full speed at him. And then Tenzan just runs forward and clotheslines the living shit out of Nakamura. And as he falls to the ground, the place just explodes. It is such an amazing spot. Like, he just clotheslines him and goes down, and then he still won't go down. As much as this man has been beaten and battered throughout this whole match, Nakamura still constantly tries to put him down, hits him with several knees, and Tenzan keeps coming back up, getting his own reversals, until Nakamura finally does a jumping knee at the top to finally put him away. Great match. My favorite G1 Climax match. Just really, really entertaining stuff. This match was, God, this match was everything I really liked about New Japan. I'll say that. Uh, Masadi Yoshino versus Don Fuji for the Open the Dream Gate title. Another great match. Another very underrated match. One of the better Dragon Gate matches of the year, in my opinion. Actually, it may be their match of the year, in my opinion. We'll see about that. Dragon Gate proper, not Dragon Gate USA. Uh, then we got John Argano versus Yamato for the Open the Freedom Gate title. This was great. Um, I'll talk a little more about this match in the future, but <laughs> this match has great drama. This is when Gargano finally wins the belt. I thought it could have came off better, because on the video packages they showed of this match, they made it seem like this was like this really Austin Aries, Samoa Joe type thing. And in reality, I saw the match, and... I don't know. He wins, and then they do that thing with Chuck Taylor, which I thought was good, but I thought it detracted from the match. It detracted from the moment, specifically. But still, the, the last few minutes of Gargano doing the near falls and the ref bombs and like kicking out of Yamato's finisher to just finally not be put down, to finally win the belt, that was really, really great stuff. And in my opinion, John Gargano is one of the better wrestlers in the country right now. I think that like everyone knows that he's one of my top five favorite wrestlers. But as far as actual work rate, I really do think he's better than Davey Richards. I really do think he is one of the best in the world types. And I know a lot of people don't see him as that. I do. I mean, if you think about wrestlers in North America that are technically more better, that they're technically better than Johnny Gargano, in my opinion, Quack, but Quack doesn't really get a chance to show it, so it doesn't really count. Danielson, too, but Danielson uh, on the indies, I'll say, because Danielson, even in WWE, doesn't really get a chance to show how good he is. As far as on the indies, the best on the indies today. I really think it's Gargano. If it's not Gargano, it's El Generico. Or maybe Kevin Steen. But that's really the only competition, in my opinion. I really think Gargano is so good right now. He's at that level, at that Davey Richard 2009 level. Maybe not as good as Davey was in 2009, but in that same category of this guy every match, every night is having a great match. Like, if you look at every great Dragon Game match, he's been in almost every single one. Like, seriously. We're gonna talk about him a lot. I think I think he's in, he's in this thing a lot, a lot, a lot. And I just don't think I, people have been saying a lot. Oh, he's great. He's improved so much. But I don't think people have been saying, "Hey, this guy is now legitimately one of the best workers in North America." I know Chuck Taylor said it, but I really don't think Argano just. Do, I just think he doesn't get the credit that he deserves. He's such a tremendous, 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 tremendous talent. And I know maybe maybe I'm being biased because I'm a because I'm a big 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 Gargano fan, but in my opinion, he really does deserve more credit for how much for how much work he puts in. All right, then we got what's next? Uh, what's one that I want to talk about? Uh, Adam Cole versus Sammy Callahan for the CCW title at a Night of Infamy. This match was great. CCW. I'm going to review every single non-tournament CCW show from last year. So I will be reviewing. I've already seen New Heights. 
and I, I've already seen I've seen most of a tangled web, and then I just need to see cerebral deja vu down with the sickness, a night of infamy, and cage of death. But I will watch them all because I think CCW storylines are very underrated. They really know how to build top feuds, and this feud has been built up for a long time, and this match felt like a big deal. Like I said, and the reason that this match is ranked higher than most is because of the drama. The drama of this match was very intense for me because I, I followed the whole storyline. And I knew what was going on. I knew how hard it was for Sammy Callahan to finally get a rematch with Adam Cole. What he had to go through with DJ Hyde. I followed the storyline and the match felt like a big deal. And I know Trademark said the match was overbooked, but I really disagree with that. I don't think it was at all. I think it all fit. The ref bump fit. DJ had interfering fit the storyline. Mia Yim interfering fit the storyline. Like LV said, it was an Attitude Era main event. I think that's a great description. And I was really into the drama of the match, which is why I thought the match was so great. And like I said, it felt like a big deal. When watching this match, you feel like this match is a big deal. And that's why it's a great match. And that's why it gets great props on my part. Eddie Kingston Jigsaw is a very underrated 12 large match. I'll say that. Uh, Johnny Gargano, back again. Johnny Gargano versus SEMA. Great match to open the Southern Gate. And this is from someone who's not that big of a SEMA fan. But I think he and SEMA had a tremendous performance. I thought the finish was excellent. Excellent. And this is where I thought the crowd really, really started getting into Gargano as a possible threat to win the bout. Hollywood and Mike Crackenbush, another great, great 12 anniversary, 12 large seven match. Danny Havoc versus Masada in a gusset place, ultraviolet ruled match. This match is insane. Like, this match is just, it's brutal. DJ Hyde in Miami told me this was the greatest death match he has ever seen, and I can understand why. This match is so brutal. Danny Havoc break. If you don't know what a gusset plate is, you just need to watch this match. He breaks the gusset plate over Masada's arm, and Masada's arm starts bleeding so much. This is like right at the very end of the match. I think they went to the finish right away when that happened. That's what it seemed like to me, like right away. Because after that happened, he had his finisher almost immediately. So I think they went to the finish right away. But Masada was bleeding so much out of his arm. He was in so much pain that I could completely understand why. Like that was brutal. And the match is just brutal. There's nothing more I can say about it. But it was, it was a great death match. It was a death match done right. It wasn't just garbage wrestling. They built up to the spots. The, the Gusta plate spots meant something. And the brutality of the match was a part of the overall drama and overall experience of the match. And that's why it was really enjoyable for me. So definitely, I think... I think that match is great and well deserved and gets great and doesn't gets no credit like no credit at least some people I've heard some people talk about Cole Callahan from Night of Infamy no one talks about this match no one so this match deserves extra props for just how good it is it might be the most underrated match on this whole list I'll say that Christian Alberto Del Rio is a great ladder match Briscoe's on that express is a great Chicago street fight Johnny Argano there he is again Austin Aries, awesome match at Fearless. This match really got Johnny Gargano over. And Aries even does a better job the next night. But we'll get into that in part two of this video. Uh, Daisuke Sakamoto and Yuji Okabayashi with another great match. Angle Jeff Chair with another great match. Bad Intentions versus No Limit was a great match. Uh, man, I feel like that match was from 2010. I don't know why, but I guess it wasn't. Uh... Kota Ibushi versus Ryusuke Taguchi in the best of the Super Junior Finals. That match is awesome. That match is so fast-paced in the last 10 minutes. And the, like I said, the near falls are excellent. The crowd is really into the match. I'm really into the match because, again, the match feels like a big deal. When matches feel like a big deal, the matches are better. I'm sorry because the drama of the match is better and you're more into the near falls. It's simple. So when people make a match seem like – when people say, oh, it doesn't matter if the match is in front of 10 or 1,000. No, it does matter. When a match feels like a big deal, you're more into the match, and therefore the match is a better match because of it. This match felt like a big deal, and that's why I was really into it. Danny Havoc Junka Sai was a great death match. Great, great, great death match. It had more variety than the Havoc Masada match. They used a lot more weapons. Maybe that's why I liked it a little more. Plus, Kasai made a special appearance and it told a great story as well. But yeah, just excellent stuff. Dick Togo versus Antonio Honda, a great, great, great match. 
And a match that I kind of glissed over because it's kind of the match I want to end this video off with. John Cena versus Rey Mysterio from the WWE title on Raw. This is probably the most underrated WWE match of the year. This match was excellent. I saw it live in Paraguay um, on a stream. Um, on a bad stream, too. But I, I was really, like, the stream was shitty the whole Raw except for this match. And when this match started, I was like, man, this stream's been a pain in the ass. I don't know if I should stick with it. And I stuck with it and stuck with it. And the stream got better and the match was, just blew me away. John Cena's selling in this match was great. Great, in my opinion. He really sold the emotion of the match, the emotion of the near falls. Rey Mysterio did an excellent job, as, a, as he always does. And he and John Cena, in my opinion, really connected. I remember the next day people were giving John Cena shit for being sloppy in this match. But you know what? Even if he was sloppy, he was just so good, so good at, the tech, at his technique, at his facials. Maybe not his technique, but in his facials and selling the match. He was so good in that aspect. And he sold for Rey Mysterio, too, that I really didn't care if he was sloppy. Because this, he he look he he added a lot to this match, whether his technique was good or not. So this was a great, great, great Raw match, and maybe my favorite. Uh, it might be my favorite TV match last year. I'm not sure. Don't quote me on that. I haven't looked through the rest of this list. But yeah, that's uh that's matches 100 through 55 plus the runners up. Um, I will do 54 through 11 soon, and then I'll do the top 10 in its own video. But right now, that is the end of part one of the top 100 matches of 2011. I want to thank you all for listening, and have a good day. Bye.